If you're buying a condo, there is one document above all others that you need to get your hands on before committing to your purchase. And in this video, we're gonna talk about that document in detail. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about the status certificate. Essentially, this is a comprehensive report that assesses the financial, the operational, and the legal health of a condominium. And it helps a purchaser understand what they're truly buying into. For anyone looking to jump into Toronto's condo market, having a grasp on what's in a status certificate is not just beneficial, it's essential. Okay, so I am going to quickly cover three things in this video. Number one, a brief overview of what information is included in a status certificate. Number two, why do you need an experienced lawyer to review that status certificate? And number three, what are some of the most important items you need to look for when reading through the status certificate yourself? My name is Jason Bondi Sawyer with the Bondi Sawyer Real Estate Team here in the city of Toronto. Now, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. And while you're at it, you click on that bell icon down below. That's gonna notify you anytime one of our new videos gets posted. And if you like this particular video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. What that's gonna do is push it out to other people like yourself who might find value in it as well. So condominiums are a type of ownership where individual units within a building or a development are owned by individual homeowners. And the common elements or common areas are collectively owned. Now the condominium corporation is a legal entity that oversees the maintenance and the administration of the building and the common elements. And the status certificate is a document that provides crucial information about the condo corporation and about the specific unit itself. Now it's a big document. It's typically a few hundred pages in length. And within that document, you're gonna find the condominium's declaration, the bylaws, the rules, along with financial statements, a reserve fund study, a budget, and details about the board of directors' financial management. It also includes information about insurance, special assessments, legal proceedings, and it even tells you how many units in the building are rented. And for the specific unit in question, it shows whether or not the owner is in arrears on their monthly maintenance fees. And like I said at the beginning of the video, if you're gonna be buying a condo, you wanna get your hands on that status certificate before committing to your purchase. Now this is typically done by putting a condition in your offer that allows your lawyer time to review the status certificate and then speak to you with their findings, pointing out any red flags or any concerns so that you can make a decision about whether or not you want to proceed with the purchase. And it's very important that you're working with a lawyer who is well-versed in reviewing condo status certificates. And if you're buying in Toronto, I'm gonna to go a step further and say that it's important that you work with a lawyer who is well-versed in reviewing Toronto condo status certificates. Because then chances are your lawyer is already gonna be familiar with the building in question, and they're gonna be able to bring some insight and experience to the table that is gonna benefit you greatly. Now, nothing is going to replace a lawyer's review of a status certificate, and nothing should. But as a buyer, you should take the time to read through the document yourself. As a realtor, I've probably read through hundreds of status certificates. So when I'm working with a buyer, I'm bringing my own insight and my own experience to the table as well. Okay, so what things do you want to pay special attention to when you're reading through a status certificate? Well, the first few pages are a really great place to start because here you're gonna find a summary of information about the condo corporation, about the specific condo unit, and about the financial and legal information that you're gonna find deeper in the document as well. The first few pages will include contact information for the property management company, names of directors and officers of the corporation, and the legal description of the condo unit. You'll also find a section here on maintenance fees. So you're gonna see what the exact maintenance fees are for that unit and whether or not the owner is in default on those fees. There's a section on the budget, which typically mentions whether or not there are any special assessments. There's a section on the reserve fund, which shows how much is currently in that fund and whether or not there are plans to increase the fund. There's also a section on legal proceedings, which shows whether or not there are any judgments against the corporation and whether or not the corporation is a party to any lawsuits. And there's also a section on leasing of units. And this is where you're gonna see how many condo units in the building are currently rented out. Now, once you move beyond those first few pages, there are a few other sections that you're gonna to wanna to take a look at. And one of those is the condominium rules. Here you'll see if there are any pet restrictions in the building. For example, residents might be allowed to have only one dog. And on top of that, there might be a weight restriction so that one dog can be no more 
than 30 pounds. So if you love dogs and you know that a year from now you want to get a puppy and you want to get a breed where that puppy is eventually going to grow into a large dog, then you're really going to want to know if there's a weight restriction in that building. The rules are also going to show you whether or not short-term leases are allowed in the building. Now, many condos now have a rule in place that say any lease must be for a minimum of six months or more. And you're going to find that in this section of the status certificate. Every buyer is different. Some rules are going to matter more to you than others. But the point is you need to read through this section to see if there's anything here that would make you reconsider moving forward with your purchase. Other important parts of the status certificate are the reserve fund study and the financial statements. And yes, parts of these are summarized in the first few pages, but there's going to be more detail here that you want to take a look at, especially if the summary mentioned a reserve fund deficiency or a special assessment. So here you're going to see things like the proposed plan for future funding of the reserve fund, a breakdown that shows you the upcoming annual increases to the reserve fund, a breakdown of the corporation's revenue and expenses, and whether or not there's going to be a surplus or a deficiency at the end of the year. So let's say the corporation plans to redo the roof or make major repairs to the parking garage. Is there enough money in the reserve fund to cover those costs? And if there's not, what is the corporation's plan for how they're gonna deal with that? Is there gonna be a special assessment where every owner has to pay thousands of dollars out of their pocket? Are the maintenance fees gonna go up? So you wanna have an idea of not just where the condo is today, financially speaking, but also about where things might be headed. Because remember, at some point in the future, you're gonna to wanna to resell this condo. And if it's looking like the maintenance fees are on a path of significant increases, it's going to be more challenging to sell that condo later on. If the summary mentioned anything about legal proceedings, you're likely gonna find more about that deeper in the status certificate as well. And this is something that you're really gonna to wanna to pay attention to. Now, it's not unusual to see a situation in the status certificate where the condo corporation is suing the builder for construction deficiencies. Or maybe there was a slip and fall accident on the premises and the corporation is being sued as a result of that. But maybe the corporation's insurance is covering the costs or maybe the money has already been earmarked to deal with the situation. Whatever the case is, you want to know what the details of those legal proceedings are so that you can make an informed decision about whether or not you actually want to buy into that situation. All right, so to recap, number one, get a hold of the status certificate as soon as you can if you're interested in a specific condo. Number two, have a professional lawyer review that status certificate and then walk you through any red flags or any concerns. Number three, read through the status certificate yourself. And number four, speak to your realtor and get their take on it as well. You want a realtor who is actively working with buyers and sellers in the condo market and is gonna be able to give you some additional insight and help guide you through the decision-making process. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. Next to me here is another one that I think you'll find valuable, so go ahead and give it a watch. Bye for now, and I'll see you next time.